Hi, everyone. Welcome to Business Ethics. My name is Leah. You all can call me Leah. And I am going to be your instructor for this course. So in today's lecture video, uh, we are going to cover a few different things. Um, first, I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, the general subject matter for the course, and then a little bit about the kind of work that you're going to be doing in this class. Um, I'm going to quickly discuss the course format, and then the main meat of today is going to be doing the syllabus overview. All right, so general subject matter of the course. So in this class, we are going to be learning about how we can utilize um, different moral principles, principles that we get within the study of ethics and apply those principles um, in, or apply those principles to issues that come up uh, within business in a pretty wide, wide range of ways. So um, some of the things that you learn in this class might end up being useful for you. Say if you're going on to uh, maybe becoming like an HR manager or just working in human resources um, and setting aside even your professional goals, hopefully some of the principles that you're gonna learn here are ones that you can just sort of apply in thinking through, you know, whether or not um, a business or even a large corporation uh, is doing something that's morally good or morally bad. Um, and one of the biggest things we're gonna do in connection to those kinds of judgments are thinking through the evidence that we can that we can gather to support claims regarding you know whether certain behavior was good morally good or whether certain behavior was morally bad really thinking through you know um, what kinds of reasons we give uh, for supporting claims that we make in that way you know um, for those of you that like to look at social media, you know, there's a wide range of ways that people think about and talk about whether certain behaviors um, that uh, businesses exhibit um, are morally good or morally bad um, behaviors, you know. Uh, we in thinking about, um, you know, how a large corporation like UPS or perhaps Amazon um, negotiates with their workers, right? If you have some opinions on that, some sort of like gut feelings, intuitions about, you know, well, you think Amazon really did a good thing here or did a bad thing here, or the people who are striking in, um, or unions that are striking or people that um, are striking uh, and trying to unionize workers um, in a, within a certain company, if you have opinions about whether or not those, the various parties that I just mentioned behaved in morally good or morally bad ways, right? In this class, what you're gonna learn to do is really scrutinize your reasons for thinking certain behaviors like that are good um, or bad. And um, a lot of it, as you'll see, is going to involve clearly explaining why you think what you think, clearly offering clear, thorough explanations of the reasons that you have for um, thinking a certain kind of behavior, a certain action that a business took, or um, perhaps certain consumer behaviors, something like this, um, clearly and explicitly explaining why you think those behaviors or those actions um, are good or bad. And one thing that you really want to keep in mind um, for this class in general is oftentimes we have a sort of, like I was mentioning earlier, this intuitive sense, this gut feeling about, well, you know, like, I don't think it's okay to lie in that kind of context, or, you know, like, this is what a consumer signed up for. They should be more wary of um, the kinds of claims that a business makes, right? Like, judgments that sort of flow into that kind of vein. It can feel really clear in our minds, those kinds of judgments that we make, even outside 
of a business context, right? Like the judgments that we have regarding um, whether or not somebody's uh, romantic partner uh, cheated. And if we think that, you know, that's like a more, that was like a morally okay thing to do or a morally bad thing to do, right? Like we might have some like really strong gut intuitive feelings about that. But what we find this is a big part of doing philosophy. When we sit down and we try to clearly explain, really get all of our thoughts on, on, that, on, on these different issues down on paper, what we find is something that felt crystal clear in our mind. As soon as we go to put it down on paper, all of a sudden it gets a little bit jumbled up. And in that process, where we're trying to clarify pushing ourselves to really spell out our thinking, getting, getting all of what's going on in your head down on paper and trying to make it make sense. That process is one where you really learn to understand the initial gut feelings or the sort of intuitive sense that you have about whether something is morally good or bad. So one thing that I'm going to talk about a little bit when I do the syllabus overview in a moment is um, this emphasis that I place on word requirements, um, like length requirements for different work that you're going to be doing in this class. And oftentimes, instructors, professors, teachers will have you follow those kinds of or satisfy, require that you satisfy these length requirements, um, sort of as a way to make sure that students are spending um, enough time engaging with the material. You know, if we want to be really uncharitable and describing that kind of practice, we might call it something like busy work. And um, me personally, I'm not going to make any judgments about whether that kind of busy work is okay. What I do want to emphasize here, though, in this class is that that is not what the, those word requirements are about. In this class, the purpose of the word requirement is to give you an idea of how much you have to explain. Because like I was saying just a second ago, the stuff that can feel so clear in our minds as soon as we go to put it down on paper and we really look at it, and this is a skill that you have to develop, really scrutinize it and make sure, you know, is this the point I'm trying to make? Is this crystal clear? Am I, you know, really like presenting my evidence um, in the most persuasive way possible and so on. That kind of um, scrutiny, that kind of like really digging into and kind of nitpicking at our work, that is doing philosophy. That is, you know, learning how to give clear, good reasons in support of the claims that we make. So what I use word minimums or the length requirements um, for in this class is to give you an indication largely to show you whether or not you need to explain your thinking more. So if you fall under a word minimum, and I make the word minimums and requirements really clear on all of the assignments. You don't have to worry about that. You'll see shortly. Um, if you fall short of that minimum, that is a message to you that is there to help you see that you need to explain your thinking a little bit more. One thing that might be really useful in that process, if you know it says you gotta, this needs to be. Um, at least 150 words, right? And you write an answer to some kind of, to some question on an assignment and it's only a hundred words and you're just like, well, you know, what else could I possibly say here? I've answered the question. Close your eyes, take a breath and think about maybe a professor that you have in another class or you've had in the past or a teacher you've had in the past, um, someone that's like smart enough and not at all connected to philosophy, okay? like maybe like an English professor or history professor that you've had. And then I want you to, somebody that you like, hopefully. <laughs> um, and then I want you to think about if that person were to read the question and read your answer, would they understand what you're trying to say? And for those of you who might find yourself in this kind of situation where you're like, I'm only at a hundred words, what else more could I say? If you go through that process, take a breath, you know, imagine like a person you think is smart, someone that like you get along well enough with. And if you showed them the work, the question 
and your answer, thinking about whether or not they could understand what you're saying. And if you do that, I promise you will find that you'll need to add a little bit more. It'll help sort of trigger, um, you know, signal to you what it is perhaps that needs a little bit more explaining. Um, so again, I just want to emphasize the kind of work that we're going to be doing in this class is really digging in, going into your, going into our minds, you know, like we're going to, I'm going to be asking you a lot in this class, your intuition, like, do you think this thing that this person did or this business did or this kind of practice, like, do you think that's a morally good way to do things, a morally bad way to do things? And the work for you is going to be really getting good at explaining why you answered the way that you did to those questions. Okay, so one thing um, or the last thing I wanna touch on before we move on to the, um, to the syllabus overview is the format of this course. So um, you're gonna see on some of our first assignments, I'm, I kind of get a little, I'm trying to get a temperature on you to figure out, um, you know, how, whether or not you've taken an asynchronous class before, any, um, you know, how you feel about your time management skills, that sort of thing. Um, and the reason why I'm asking those questions is because as you all know, this is an asynchronous class, meaning we have no required times set schedule for you to show up anywhere, whether it's on Zoom or in person, none of that, right? Instead, there are going to be assignments with due dates. So you're going to be able to watch all of the lecture videos, do all the readings, complete other um, of, the, uh, of the required materials all in your own time, provided that you make the deadlines, meet the deadlines for, um, for the different assignments. And one of the challenging things about a course that's structured in this way is that you don't have anywhere that you have to show up on at a specific time. It can be really easy to push something off, um, maybe not realize, oh, this lecture video is actually a little bit longer, or I didn't realize it would take me this long to get this reading done. It's, it's tempting, um, I would think maybe for some of you, probably not all of you, but for those of you who are anything like me, that definitely 100% have a lot of trouble procrastinating. Um, this class is gonna be really, really important that you develop a good system for staying on top of the assignment deadlines, really setting aside time every week to like a set schedule for yourself, you know, uh, like Tuesdays and Thursdays from noon to three, something like this. Um, and just really sticking to it and, and um, filling out those hours essentially for the class, sticking to your schedule um, will definitely help you stay organized. All right, on to the syllabus overview. Okay. So the syllabus, I would think that um, most of you have uh, taken a look at it by now. Um, it's here, great. Um, you can find it on the course blackboard um, under the tab on the main menu labeled syllabus. If you have any trouble tracking it down, let me know. Um, in addition, I also gave a little bit of a, an overview of how to navigate the course Blackboard, just because I imagine that, you know, all of your instructors probably do things ever so slightly just a bit different um, on Blackboard. And since this class is entirely online, it's an asynchronous course, and we don't have an opportunity to sit down and talk in person, um, I wanted to sort of give you a hands-on visual of um, how I structure the Blackboard. So you can find that video under course resources, um, and by clicking on the tab instructional, instructional videos and rubrics on the, on the course Blackboard. Okay, so I have my contact information on the 
syllabus. Um, one thing that is absolutely crucial if you ever email me, the only way I can promise you that I will respond to your email is if you put phi 330 in the subject line. Um, unfortunately, CUNY has a uh, mass email sending problem. I am an instructor at Lehman and I am also a graduate student at the Graduate Center um, in the city. So I have two merged CUNY accounts, which means that my inbox is just getting flooded with um, a lot of not, I wouldn't say like superfluous, but a lot of stuff that doesn't necessarily apply to me. And one way that I can ensure that I will see your email, see that you emailed me, is if you put 5330 in the subject line. If you do not put 5330 in the subject line, I cannot promise that I will respond to your email. Um, so it's really, really important for your own sake, because if you're emailing me, obviously you need something from me. And since we don't get to see each other in person, um, or like during a synchronous, like online course, uh, it's going to be crucial that you remember to like, essentially put yourself at the top of the priority line when it comes to me looking through emails and responding to emails. Um, so like I mentioned, the, um, the course is an asynchronous course. Um, all of the content is available on our course Blackboard. Again, you can look at the little overview navigating Blackboard video that I made. Um, if you want to, if you're like worried that you don't know where some of the course content went, because I structure it a little differently maybe than your other professors. Um, so my office hours are on Mondays, 4 p.m. to 5 p.m. And most importantly, by appointment. I really can make an appointment at any time. Um, if you would like to make an appointment with me, you can email me. Give me a couple of times that work for you. If you do email me, though, be sure to put 5, 3.30 in the subject line. Okay, so um, this class Introduction to Business Ethics. I've talked about some of the subject matter um, at the beginning of this video. Um, we're really going to be digging into looking at obligations that businesses have um, and the individuals, the kinds of obligations that the individuals who run them have also. And we're going to be thinking about things like do businesses have social responsibilities besides making money? Um, are there certain moral principles that we want to utilize to identify what kinds of obligations businesses have? And if so, if it's ever acceptable to, um, to deceive um, people in business to negotiation. Um, we're going to spend a pretty good chunk of time additionally um, on what discrimination is, right? Like we're all familiar with that word, but we're going to be thinking about really like what discrimination is and um, getting a clear understanding of a number of arguments sort of supporting the idea that discrimination is wrong. There's a number of ways that you could sort of utilize different reasons, point to different reasons to say like discrimination is wrong. And we're going to learn about some tactics, um, some approaches for doing that. And then lastly, we're going to be talking about um, some uh, about the environmental responsibilities that businesses have. So um, insofar as the learning outcomes, we're going to be learning a little bit about, uh, you know, some good old fashioned moral and political philosophy, like I was mentioning earlier, some principles um, from different uh, from different philosophical theories and using those to analyze some contemporary issues in business. Um, there's going to hopefully be uh, some bolstering of your critical reasoning skills, that process I was talking about earlier and having to, you know, write down really explicitly get out there clearly explain why you think what you think getting some that's that is that is a way to hone your critical reasoning skills um also to improve your ability to engage productively in discussion as i'll explain shortly there um every week almost just about uh you're going to be posting on the um 
on a discussion um, on an in a discussion board or forum. Uh, I think Blackboard uses the term forum, um, and uh, and you're going to be engaging with your fellow classmates there. Um, so hopefully you'll learn to get uh, a little bit better at um, participating in that sort of exchange more productively. Um, also developing skills necessary for making clear and persuasive argument that sort of goes part and parcel with um, with critical honing those critical reasoning skills. But in this class in particular, making clear and persuasive arguments concerning the moral permissibility of actions taken by individuals um, and or and or businesses. And then finally, like I also touched on sort of at the beginning of the video, this isn't just going to be about, hopefully it won't just be about um, learning to examine moral issues that are rel that are um, relevant to your professional goals, right? Like if um, the hope is, is you both, if you want to go into say something like HR or maybe like open your own small business one day, some of the um, skills that you'll develop in this class hopefully will both help you in those kinds of capacities if those are what your professional goals are, those kinds of professional goals. And in addition, on a personal level too, just sort of examining our relationship with like different corporations and businesses that we, you know, that we buy things from, um, things that we consume. Okay, so um, like I also said, all course materials are available on Blackboard. Um, again, if you want some help sort of navigating how to find different things on Blackboard, um, you should watch the, the Navigating Blackboard video that I have posted. Um, and uh, just to let everyone know now, right off the bat, I organized the course, and you'll see this when we talk about the, um, talk about the course schedule in a little bit, um, I organize, I break down the course um, by separate, by um, modules. So we have different, we're going to be covering four different or seven different modules in this class. Um, and each module has its own kind of theme. So by clicking on the um, module, the current module period, and I have the dates listed on the Blackboard menu as well, you'll, that's where you're going to be able to access everything. So you can go by date and then you'll be able to access like, all of your assignments related to the discussion board, um, worksheet assignments, I'll explain what that is in just a moment, uh, readings, lecture videos, that sort of thing. Um, you'll find everything for each module period under that module. And again, the on the menu on Blackboard, you'll be able to see the dates there as well to help orient yourself. Okay, like I said before, this class is fully online and asynchronous, so there's like no time that we have to meet up in person, online, whatever. Um, instead, you're going to be working on your own time, but abiding by those scheduled due dates uh, to watch certain lecture videos, make posts and comments on the discussion boards, and to complete all written assignments and exams. Okay, so this is important. Very, very important. Maybe important to an assignment that you have that is due at the end of this module period, module period one. Um, how much time do students need to spend on uh, per week on this class? So you need to anticipate spending between four and six hours a week on coursework for this class. That includes all the reading, all the lecture video watching, um, podcasts, videos, writing, and so on. Um, and again, I just want to reiterate, uh, especially for people that have slight procrastination problems like myself, um, having a set schedule for yourself is going to be key. Uh, I really, I can't emphasize enough, especially if you've never taken an asynchronous class before, how helpful schedules are even if you don't always abide by the schedule, but you just sort of have it in your mind, like, okay, between noon and three, Tuesdays and Thursdays, 
is the time I'm going to set aside for this class. Something might come up on a Tuesday, you know, um, say that, uh, like a friend needs help moving or something like this. You'll go, okay, well, that was my time that I was going to do this, but like my friend needs help. Like maybe I can make up that time there, or maybe you get through things a little bit more quickly, got some extra work done the earlier, the previous week. Um, you can be flexible with it, but you should still have a set time that you should have set days and times that, um, are gonna, that are gonna, um, work for you. And if you can't do that, say you, um, have one of those lovely jobs where like, they just give you your schedule, they schedule you out a week or two in advance. Like I worked in service industry and restaurants for like, uh, over a decade. And that was, that was, there was like, if an instructor asked me to do something like that, I would just sort of like laugh in their face. I'm like, well, I don't know what my schedule is going to look like. I don't have that luxury. Right. So if that's the case for you, then you need to just set a time every week or every two weeks, like when you get your schedule. Um, and it could be just like a half hour where you sit down with like a calendar. There's a bunch of apps that you could use things like this, whatever, whatever tools, you know, work best with your brain. And then you sketch out for the next two weeks. Okay. How am I going to make my, you know, um, if you're sketching out for the next two weeks, how am I going to make my 12 hours between my eight and 12 hours? Um, or, uh, if you're scheduling out for just the, the coming week you know, how am I going to make my, um, my four to six hours? Where can I, where can I put that in given my work schedule? All right. So, um, accessibility it is difficult with Blackboard. Blackboard is, um, notorious for not being very, um, helpful for people who are colorblind and things like this. Um, so, and even if you don't have any diagnosed disability um, or whatever, uh, if you are having trouble navigating things on Blackboard, if you um, your browser does something weird every time you try to click on a link or something like this, you're welcome to tell me about it. Um, I, you know, I try as best I can to uh, make different, um, try to, I try to make the class flexible enough to suit people's different, like people have different learning styles. I try to really switch things up. So everybody um, has like a little bit of time with like the learning style that benefits them best. But if there's something that comes up, yeah, like if you're, you know, if you're really like str struggling with the interface on Blackboard, which just generally as a platform kind of sucks. Let's, let's be honest about it. Um, if you're having, if you're having those kinds of issues, you are more than welcome to email me. Let me know. Just be like, I'm having a really hard time, like seeing this thing or doing that thing. I will happily set, I could set a time with you where we can like do some screen sharing to help you navigate things a little bit better. We could, uh, make other accommodations, um, depending on the situation, but I just want to really emphasize that regardless of whether or not you have any kind of disability or if you're just struggling in turn, just generally accessing something you need in this class, right? Like you're in a position where you feel like you don't have all the stuff you need to show up and do really well. And if there's something I can do to help you in that way, please, 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 I cannot emphasize this enough. Let me know. Obviously through email, and if you do the email, remember to put 5, 330 in the, in the subject line. Another thing I want to touch on before I move on to the, to the course requirements is um, I can't emphasize enough how valuable it is. Um, if you have any kind of inkling about um, different things that might get sort of categorized as like a learning disability, um, for instance, you know, if you have a really hard time keeping track of the time, right? Like big swaths of time go by and like, you, like, you don't know, or you just like get really overwhelmed. Like you just have a hard time seeing all this stuff. Um, something like that. It's worth considering, um, going to disability services and sort of seeing what your options are. 
Um, if you felt like there's just something that other students, there's some kind of ease that other students have and you're just struggling in some kind of way, um, go to disability services, talk to them. Um, it, or if you have something like really bad anxiety and taking tests, right? You can go to them, you can talk to them, potentially get like accommodations for exams and things like this. Um, really, if you sense anything, go to disability services, talk to them, see what they can do for you. Um, personally, myself, I, it took me a very, I was diagnosed with ADHD. Um, about seven years ago right so I went through like all of my all of my like elementary school high school undergraduate um years really struggling and taking exams in particular um and if I had sort of gotten that diagnosis earlier then it would have been great because I would have been able to have some better accommodations um in taking those exams so uh, yeah, I just can't emphasize enough how valuable that resource is at Lehman. And um, even if you don't think that you deserve it or you don't really like think that it applies to you, if you have any kind of little voice in the back of your head saying, maybe I should check it out. Um, it's just, it's worth looking into. And I have the link to disability services on the, on the syllabus. Okay, on to course requirements. So, uh, you're gonna see we have, um, there's this kind of pair of assignments, uh, the course goals and course reflections assignments. So in the beginning of the term, you're gonna be doing a course goals assignment. It's posted on Blackboard. Um, and uh, then at the end of the term, you're gonna have a course reflection assignment. And both of these are gonna be worth 20 points each, which is not, you know, not nothing in this class. It's 10% of the grade. Um, and a uh, rubric um, for this for this assignment is up on Blackboard in that um, in that uh, tab I keep keep on bringing up um, instructional videos and rubrics. So the purpose of these assignments, like the in particular the course goals assignment is to really get you to just sit and reflect on what it is that you want to get out of the class. Um, and then at the end to sit and reflect. To, and think about you know whether you got what you wanted out of the class. Okay, um, now we have what is essentially going to constitute your participation grade in this class. So since this is an asynchronous class, we don't have like in-class discussion or anything like this. The way that you're going to participate is through these discussion board assignments, which I abbreviate as DBA, discussion board assignment. These assignments are going to make up 30% of your grade. They're worth 10 points each. And um, what they're designed to do, for the most part, even if you haven't gotten through all the reading or like watched the entire lecture video, there's going to be stuff that you can still talk about in these discussion board posts. Um, I have all of the, all 12 of the discussion board posts up on Blackboard now. So if you're curious, you can pause the video and pop over and take a look at sort of what um, what these, what, the, what the prompts look like for the discussion board, uh, assignments for these DBAs. Um, and the, as you know, as you'll see, whether you do that now or you do that later, I have a lot of videos and articles and things like this, where that's, that's where we do a lot of applying the moral principle stuff, the stuff that we get from um, from ethics and, and a little bit from political philosophy and apply it to our like to business context um, as well as sort of reflect on you know just like on a personal level um, how we how we think about these things um, so they're not always but sometimes they're kind of entertaining and fun to think about um, I try to like keep somewhat relevant stuff in them but they're just kind of to get the get your wheels greased in thinking about the concepts that we're covering during that module period. Um, so one thing that's important to keep in mind is that with the exception of Thanksgiving week because of the holiday, um, all of the posts are due up on Thursday. So you'll have, you have a prompt that you have to answer. That's your post. 
all posts are due on Thursdays. And then you're going to be required to reply to at least one other post. And you are required to reply, have your reply in to another post by Sunday. So if you look at the due dates for these DBA assignments, you're going to see that they are due on Sundays. That's because um, the replies are due on Sundays. I had to have the without, it would be very cluttered and messy. Again, Blackboard, not the greatest platform um, if I separated this out. So even though your DBAs are going to say they're always due on Sundays, you'll have half of that assignment that's due on Thursday. So like I said, these are completed in two parts. The first part is posting a thread. So the questions are specifically designed to where you, you'll need to use at least 150 words to provide a sufficient answer to the, to the prompt question. Um, and really, it shouldn't go over 250 words. Uh, normally, I feel like students like struggle to meet the minimum. Every so often, there's people that really, you know, like get excited about things and like they want to go way over. I'd like to encourage everybody, though, to stick within these parameters, 150 to 250 words. Though that length, the, again, these questions are specifically designed. This is not about busy work, right? Like this is about you making sure that you're really explaining everything that you need to explain and staying on topic. So oftentimes if, the, if people who have in the past with these assignments gone over the 250 words, they kind of are like veering off track or they're trying to bring too much in. So really just for the sake of honing your critical reasoning skills, stick within those stick within those parameters now the reply to a post um essentially they just have to show some kind of thoughtful engagement i want you to like go through and read people's posts um again not all of these but at least some of them should be interesting hopefully to you so you want to see what different people sort of had to say about stuff um and when it comes to sort of the criteria of what counts as like a thoughtful engagement, right? Like it seems like maybe it might be feel like a little bit of a vague term for some of you. Um, you can review the uh, rubric for DBA assignments under the um, instructional video uh, and rubrics tab on Blackboard. Um, so one real quick note about the DBAs. So we have 12 of these assignments posted throughout the term. Each of them is worth 10 points. And in order to pass the class, at the end of the semester, you have to do at least half. You have to earn at least half of those 120 possible points. So, you know, if you're only say doing like half the assignment or something like this, and like um, you'll be able to, I grade things, I have a pretty quick turnaround on the discussion board assignments. Um, and you're, you know, you're seeing like you're like pretty consistently getting like three or four say, um, so I doubt that's, this is probably that I doubt that this would happen for anyone, but just to give you a sense of what I'm talking about here. So like, even though you're turning it in, like you're barely getting any points for it. If that happens consistently, then you're going to have to start to be a little bit worried about whether or not you're going to pass the class. The reason for this is because we don't meet in person, right? Like I said, this is the participation grade. This is sort of like coming to class. So if you're, you know, somebody who would be regularly getting two, three points out of the 10 possible points on a discussion board uh, on a DBA, uh, on a DBA would be somebody sort of probably like coming in regularly, you know, the last like 20 minutes of say like a class that meets regular, like in person two days a week, right? So that person's barely showing up to class essentially. And, you know, I'm sure that you've had plenty of professors that kind of have stipulations regarding that stuff. You know, if you're not showing up to class at least half the time, then, um, then you're, then you're not going to pass the class. So that's sort of the rationale behind this portion here that I have highlighted in yellow. Um, and crucially, no posts and or replies will receive 
no late posts and or replies will receive credit. So um, you have to get these in on time. These think about these DBA assignments, like you're showing up to class, like these DBA assignments essentially function as like you signing in for the role and like maybe talking to some students every so often. Uh, this is like, that's the level of work, um, sweat that you put in to, to these assignments. Okay, so one of the um, other big chunks of your grade are gonna come from um, your module worksheet assignments. So these are gonna be worth 20 points each, but you have seven of them. So it makes up 35% of your grade. Um, and you'll see the due dates and all that sort of thing for these module worksheet assignments below. Um, I have, I believe all of the module worksheets assignment, all of the module worksheets up and posted on Blackboard like for the whole semester. So if you wanna sort of get a sense of what those questions might look like, you're welcome to take a peek there. Um, so, uh, I needed, I need to adjust this actually. Um, okay. So each worksheet is due at the end of its respective module period. So at the end of this module period, module period one, which is September 3rd, that's when this module, module period one ends. Um, you're going to have a module worksheet due. And that's going to go for the end of module period two, three, four, et cetera. Um, and the worksheets are going to help you sort of like dig into uh, the material covered in the readings, lecture videos, assigned videos, podcasts, and so on. And um, typically they consist of about, and this is, this is typically, it's not, this is not the case for every single worksheet, but in general, it's about five to 10 short answer questions, which is going to range from three to five sentences, actually. And again, those, um, those uh, length requirements are really important to meet. Um, sentences, it's a little bit different. You can you can write in short sentences, but really, I think through. I've and I've been teaching this class for a long time now. Um, I've very carefully vet my questions and and make sure that you know it's like this number, um, these these particular number of uh, sentences that you need to that you need to write. Um, yeah, it's bare minimum of three sentences. They're going to be essentially three points that you're going to have to make, three things that you're going to have to um, say in response to each question, each short answer question on the module worksheet. And then um, at the end of the module worksheet, you'll have one to two. I think it's almost, it's, I think there's only maybe one instance where there's two. Most of the time it's just one long answer question, which is going to be at least 250 words and shouldn't be more than 500 words. So that's um, one page, uh, one page single spaced is the minimum. Um, and uh, like I, um, or rather, as you're going to see on the course goals assignment, I'm going to ask for those of you who are interested in me assigning you to a study group. So you're not going to have, you don't have access to one another's emails in this class. Um, but what you can do is sort of by request, I can put you into, um, put you into separate study groups. And, um, you know, for those of you that that is uh, at all something that sounds appealing, I strongly encourage you to sort of bounce things off of um, people in your study group. So, uh, again, you know, I understand there are definitely people who are like, nope, that never works well for me. I don't like talking to other people about stuff and I can totally respect that. Anybody who's the slightest bit open, um, you'll have the opportunity to let me know if you'd like to do a study group on the course goals assignment. And, um, and if that is at all something that appeals to you, um, I really encourage you to ask um, to work on these assignments um, with your fellow classmates. Um, and, uh, you know, that said, if you do have some people that you really get along well with and like you like working on stuff with, um, you just have to make sure you can't submit uh, like totally identical um, 
answers. You know, you're welcome to work with people. You're welcome to essentially say the same things, but you all have to use your own unique language and words to explain those um, ideas. I also would like to say that, you know, I think sometimes people um, who are uninterested and working in a study group might later on find, you know, actually it does, might help me to bounce some of this stuff off of other people. And if that's the case, if you initially say, no, I do not want a study group. And then you get a few module periods in and you're like, oh, I wish I had somebody to talk to about this. Let me know. And I can put you in a study group as well. This is not like a hard line. Like if you don't say yes this time, then you forever lose the opportunity. Um, just see how it goes. In general, explaining this stuff, you know, just using your words in conversation with people, it's sort of like a halfway step to doing that work of putting it down on paper. So um, if you really struggle in expressing yourself and getting your words down on paper, even if you don't like the idea of being in a study group, I would like for you to consider it just because when you're talking with people, it can be easier, the stuff comes out and you get a little bit more clarity on it and it can grease the wheels just enough for you to start that like metaphorical pen on paper, right? Because we never do that, like typing or whatever. Like it can get grease the wheels to get you writing to um, start clarifying your thinking and, and getting all the, all the stuff that is going on in your head down on, um, down on paper. Okay, uh, so 25% of your grade is gonna come from um, the exams. We have two exams in this class, a midterm and a final exam. Um, these are gonna be open note, open book, all this stuff. And you're gonna have, um, and you're gonna have 48 hours um, to, I modified the syllabus for just a different formatted course. Um, you're gonna have 48 hours to complete each exam. Um, the exams are, uh, gonna look very similar to your worksheets. Um, essentially, the way that the midterm and final exam work are they're just, it's gonna be questions that you've already answered on your worksheets, right? Like, why would she make us answer these questions again? Well, because this class is about learning to really explain why you think what you think, getting a lot of clarity in that thought process getting that clarity down on paper and learning how to do it in a persuasive way. So you're gonna essentially need to write drafts of answers, even if it seems kind of like a trivial thing, like a three to five sentence answer to some question like on module worksheet two or whatever. You'll see, I'm very rigorous in my grading. I'm not, um, I guess I am a, uh, not a super easy grader, but I give you a lot of feedback. Like I promise all of you, I will never ever write, this doesn't make sense. Um, I'll like, tell you why, what I'm having trouble understanding, what you needed to explain more. And you're gonna use that feedback primarily on the worksheets to help you kill it on both of the exams. So the way it's gonna work, say for the midterm exam, um, that comes after the, you'll have four module periods before the midterm exam. And the midterm exam is gonna consist of selected questions from module period two, three, and four, because module period one is just like a syllabus quiz for the most part. So module periods two, three, and four, it's gonna be a selection of questions from those module modules, the module worksheet two, module worksheet three and module worksheet four, so a selection of questions from those worksheets um, are going to be uh, on the exam. So you're gonna, the midterm exam, so you're gonna have that opportunity to get my feedback, read my comments, think through the ideas, the questions a little bit more. And essentially you are more than welcome, say if you answer some of those questions perfectly, you are more than welcome. This is the one time copying and pasting is like, um, encouraged in the class. You get a perfect, I say, wow, this is a really great way to answer this question. I hadn't thought about it in that way before. That question shows up on the midterm exam, more than welcome to just copy and paste it, throw it on there, you're all done. Um, another thing I wanna mention, or last thing I wanna mention about the midterm exams is that um, they are not cumulative. So when we, so, after you submit your midterm exam, you can say goodbye to all the stuff that we learned in module periods one, two, three, and four. 
and hello to the new content. The final exam is just going to cover module periods five, six, and seven. That's it. It's just going to be questions from worksheets that we have from module worksheet five, module worksheet six, module worksheet seven. Okay. So timing and feedback on grades. Um, I'm pretty quick with the discussion board uh, or the DBA, um, grading your DBAs. Uh, the worksheets take a little bit longer. Like I said, I'm very thorough in my, in my comments. Um, and it typically takes me about two, two weeks to grade. Um, and if you submit anything late, I can't make any promises on when I'll get that back to you. Um, so, you know, especially if there is a midterm or final exam around the corner, it's really, it behooves you to get that work in ASAP because otherwise, like you're gonna want my comments um, before, before the midterm exam. Okay, everyone's personal favorite, academic integrity. All right, um, plagiarism cheating not tolerated in this course. If you have any questions about it, you know, um, ask another student maybe or ask me. Um, I just want to say that uh, ninety nine point nine percent of the time I've ever had any issues with um, someone that has copied and pasted work that wasn't their own, put it on an assignment. Um, it is not because the student is lazy. Um, oftentimes, it's people that have spent an incredible amount of time on their assignments and they just don't feel like their heads are kind of all spun around and they're like, I just don't know what to say. I don't know what to do. All of my words sound up. This doesn't seem right. I don't get it. Stressed out. Um, every so often, you know, there's like some very understandable like uh, time issue that comes in, people experiencing maybe like a personal emergency. They didn't have time to finish the assignment. Um, and then a fair amount of the time, people not even realizing like you just cannot cop the way that this class works. Like I was emphasizing this thing about learning to hone your critical reasoning skills, all of that out the window, the second that you're copying and pasting words you didn't write. The bulk of the work in this class is doing that thing where you're pushing yourself to get what's happening up here down on paper. And there's gonna be a lot of complex concepts, very abstract thinking done in this class and really mucking about and forcing yourself to just like gain some sense, some understanding of what it is we're talking about and express that on paper. That is what this class is all about. And I am here to help you get better at that. It doesn't matter. You can, um, one of the, I am always more than happy to allow students to submit on, on their module worksheets. You submit something, your answer is way out there. Like, I'm like, oh, I don't have any, you know, like there's some big, some deep confusion that happened, right? I will give you comments. I will help bring you back. I will help guide you to get you to a place of more clear, better understanding and give you an opportunity to make up those last points. Any questions that you do not get full credit for on the module worksheets, you are allowed to resubmit those questions. So do your best. Push yourself to put something down. If you're having a problem, email me. Um, even if it's right before the assignments due, especially if you have something going on, contact me. Let me know what's happening. Do essentially anything. I've given a very wide range of options, giving you a wide range of options to do. Do anything but copy and paste words you did not write yourself. Um, the thing is, I really don't care about, I don't, the standard reasons that a lot of professors have for thinking that plagiarism is wrong, I think personally it doesn't resonate with me. Um, largely because the people that actually cause real harm through plagiarism are very rarely held accountable. So it's a big problem within academia. You can look at any big Ivy League university like Yale or Stanford or Princeton or Harvard, and you are gonna find 
so many stories about grad students that put their blood, sweat, and tears into research work and papers, and they have tenured professors who just yoink, put it, put their name on it, steal it from the graduate student, and there's no accountability for it. Those are the instances where real harm happens. When I have students who are copying and pasting off of like Wikipedia, I don't think anybody's getting hurt. I don't think there's anything necessary. I don't think there's anything deeply morally wrong about stealing someone else's idea. Some people feel like that's inherently wrong and I can respect that. Personally, that's just not my thing. What I, the reason why I do not want students doing that thing is because it undermines my purpose in being here. I am here, like I said, to help you get better and hone those critical reasoning skills. If I am giving comments to something that is on Wikipedia or something that ChatGPT came up with, there's no, that's pointless. It's, it is truly a waste of my time. It would be better for you to come to me and tell me what's going on potentially see if you could get an extension on an assignment rather than waste my time having me grade something like an AI came up with. Okay. Just it's the, it's the point for me is that, it, you know, like it just entirely defeats the reason why, why we're here. Speaking of this new wonderful technology, um, these AIs, these, large language model chatbots. So I am sure everybody here has heard of something like ChatGPT, Bart, Writer, Quillbot, et cetera, or other free services. Just to let you know, um, the, uh, the things like Quillbot and Writer um, use essentially use the um use chat gpt uh to generate answers to things so like these other um llm chatbots uh that are like often like marketed to students a lot and stuff like that like oftentimes like they're essentially just chat gpt they just charge you money just to give people a heads up about that okay so um, you know, this is something that I would think you're, a lot of you are hearing a lot about, uh, because, you know, it's something that's like pretty per pervasive within, um, within college and academia. Um, it's pretty incredible, uh, for those of you who, who haven't like checked it out, it's, there are these AIs been able to come up with like, wow, this actually sounds sort of like a human wrote it. Um, and I know it could be really tempting to just ask one of these bots like questions that are on the module worksheet. Um, again, like I said, that it doesn't, I don't, you're not stealing from anything. It's not wrong because of a, like stealing from, you know, like chat GPT or whatever. It undermines my purpose in being here and it wastes my time. So copying and pasting ChatGPT or Quillbot or writer's answer to a question on a worksheet, say, um, is a form of academic dishonesty. It violates the men's policies on the matter, and it's prohibited in this class. Trying to pass that off on your as your own work, if that happens at any point in an assignment, you will receive a zero for that entire assignment. And the reason why I am so strict about this is because I know that we, you know, I know it's a really valuable tool. I know that, um, that there are, um, that we're covering, you know, dense, complex stuff. Like sometimes I really do think that these technologies actually help students sort of weed through um, and sort of like help get a little bit of clarity on the, um, on the course materials. And so I really, I get that temptation to want to use it. Um, so while you are prohibited from trying to pass off a chat bots like work as your own, 
there are certain conditions under which I am permitting students to utilize this technology. Um, so you can find the guidelines for using chatbots under the um, under the uh, course resources tab on Blackboard. I am going to very quickly share the guidelines with everyone. Okay. If you have any questions about this, feel free to, um, to ask me about it. Okay, so you must set, if you want to use, if you wanna ask ChatGPT, you wanna plug in one of the worksheet questions of ChatGPT, you are allowed to do so, but you have to do it in a very specific way. So first you have to satisfy two criteria. There are two conditions under which it is permissible to use this tech in the class. You have done the required readings, listen to the podcast, watch the lecture videos, you have, you have to have done the work, okay? Even if you don't understand it, you just had to have done it. Like if you like went through and you're like, I don't understand how these words fit together, but like, okay. And you actually watched and listened to the entire lecture video, regardless of how confused you are, but you spent time doing it. So you have to have done that. And two, you have to have tried to have answered you have to have tried to answer any of the, like say it's a worksheet question, you had to have at least tried on your own once to answer that question before turning to the chatbot, okay? So if you've satisfied those two criteria, essentially using this tech, you're gonna have to do a little bit more writing, mainly in terms of explaining what you were confused about. So if you don't understand the course material, one thing that actually I think you would be very surprised by how much it would help is just like putting down, again, the thoughts on the paper, why you felt confused. So that's the first thing that you have to answer. So if you're gonna, so um, I can, I'm gonna give us example of this um, down below in just a second. But anytime you wanna turn to something like ChatGPT, um, you plug in that question, right? Like you plug in a question from a worksheet to ChatGPT. Uh, you're gonna have to answer, there's gonna be four sort of like sub parts to your answer that you'll have to complete. It's gonna be a little bit more writing, like I said. So first, I want you to explain why you felt confused about how to answer the question and or write out the answer that you gave before you asked a chatbot. Then, and this is, you are allowed to copy and paste chat, the chatbot's answer. Then B, I want you to show me what the chatbot, what, how the chatbot responded to the question. C, I then want you to look at what the chatbot said and think about if it missed anything because it often does. The thing is, these chatbots are a compilation of sort of like the general, um, like it's a, it's a compilation of like the majority view on situations. Like these chatbots are effectively like just towing the line, like um, maintaining the status quo. Like it's just like the general popular, like most, um, the majority sort of view on things. And as I'm sure every single one of you could come up with in an example, something in your life where like the majority, you felt like the majority was wrong, right? That happens. That definitely happens with the philosophical concepts that we're going to be talking about in this class. There's a lot of times where ChatGPT, I'm familiar with how a lot of different, um, uh, chatbots like respond to the questions that you'll have that you have that you're going to answer in this class um, and like there are a lot of they're like yeah there's a lot of times where like the chatbots get it wrong and they miss something so just think about it and reflect on it and then I want you to explain like in this sort of like little bit of extra work answer that you're going to have to do in order to use the chatbot 
I want you to explain, think about if it missed anything. And then finally, I want you to give your own answer. So you can read what the chatbot says, right? Think about what you were confused about. Think about whether it left anything out. And then in your own words, might require taking a breath, closing your eyes, whatever, however you reset, um, in your own words, giving your answer. If any part of this is missing, you won't get credit for that question. Importantly, this is not the same as effectively cheating in the way that a student would be were they to just copy and paste and try to pass off as their own. So here, if you say someone just answered, like didn't give their new answer, for example, but they like explained, they talked about these three points, they answered these three subparts of the question. They would get a zero just on that one question, right? Whereas if someone uses a chat bot and tries to pass it off as their own, so they don't do any of this, they get a zero for the whole assignment. Okay. And again, like, to be entirely honest, I really hate policing students and like having penalties for stuff like this, but I just want the stakes to be high enough as to where you're honest with me. If this is a tool you want to utilize, I'm with you and I understand that it can be a very, very helpful resource. And, you know, for anybody who's been utilizing the free Grammarly accounts that CUNY offers its students, right? Like you've been having an AI help you write your work this whole time. You know, I don't see any harm in like maybe using an AI to sort of like help you like polish what you're saying, make it look prettier, make it look cleaner, whatever. I think that that's entirely fine. That's a great, that's a great strength of this technology. But again, I am here to help you hone your critical reasoning skills. And I cannot do that if you're copying and pasting work from an AI and telling me that it's yours. So be honest, tell me that you're using it and, um, and, uh, and do your best to just like answer these really, if you're struggling enough to where you wanna to turn to the AI, this is designed for you to do that, but sort of coming, you have to like pay me back in the form of pushing yourself to explain why you felt confused about the material, you know? And if you don't, if you didn't satisfy the conditions above, say like you like ran out of time and you didn't watch the videos, that sort of thing, um, or you like didn't do the readings, it's far better to email me <laughs> and uh, see what we can do about an extension than it is to just, um, to just turn to an AI uh, to get the work done for you on time. Um, Okay, so then below here, I give an example of what it is I'm talking about. So this is what it should look like anytime any of you wanna to turn to like a chat box to help you do work. So here we have a question here. This is one of the questions on the module one worksheet. So here's the question. And then instead of just writing out your three to five sentences, you're gonna write A, I felt confused about this. There, uh, B. Um, I need to change the formatting on this. Um, this is the chatbot's answer, right? C, did it leave anything out? You can say no, I don't think it did, that's fine. But you have to include that part. You need to write B. Do you think the chatbot's answer left out any important points? And then C, your new answer after, um, after uh, asking the chatbot. Okay. Now that we've gotten clear on that, um, yeah, and I just, you know, uh, any sort of like repeated uses of um, any any kind of like academic dishonesty, whether it's like Wikipedia or ChatGPT, um, you know, that's something uh, that might receive further sanctions um, and so on. Religious observances. Uh, if you need extensions on assignments, please try to just 
give me as much of a heads up as you can. Um, I understand if things slip your mind though, uh, at the end of the day, I am always here to make any accommodation for uh, religious observances that any student might need. Um, okay, be kind. That's just my additional course policy. Just be kind to one another. We're gonna be maybe talking about some stuff you don't always agree with other people. Maybe you don't agree with me. Maybe you don't agree with one of the um, one of the uh, authors or speakers and some of the course materials that we review. Be kind. Um, it's an important thing. It's a nice quality to have in life um, and in the real world. Uh, it's good to be respectful. I think that probably everyone here agrees with that. Okay, course schedule. You're almost done. Um, so here, I don't need to go over things in significant detail, but the way that I have sort of broken things up for you organization-wise is um, I have the material, all of the required course materials in this like big box here for all of the um, module periods. You can find all of these things like the syllabus, this lecture video, the required reading for module one, or the required readings for module one under the module one tab. And then I also have listed the due dates for assignments. Um, so yeah, again, you can access the syllabus on Blackboard under the syllabus tab. I know, big surprise. Um, and Lastly, um, at the end, I have some really useful dates for students to remember. I didn't use to put this on the syllabus, um, but I think especially for an asynchronous class, things come up in your life. Maybe you don't, you like thought that you were gonna have more time than you did, whatever. It's, or maybe not this class, maybe it's another class. It's really good to keep these dates in mind, especially when it comes to like how early you might need to drop a course in order to get at least some of your tuition money back, right? Um, it's always a pain when like a student realizes just a little bit too late and then they can't get their money back. These classes aren't cheap. Um, so you can have a, um, you can access those, those dates there. Okay. That about does it for our very first lecture video um, in uh, the introduction to business ethics, this class that we're gonna be taking this semester. Um, if you have any questions, you're more than welcome to email me. My contact information is up on Blackboard and on the syllabus. Additionally, you can post questions like, technical issues, you're not maybe seeing a certain document that you need to download or a video link isn't working on Blackboard. You can post those questions on the Q&A forum um, on, on Blackboard. Um, so that is under uh, course resources. Um, it's a discussion board forum. It's a really, really good place to go, especially with technical issues or if you're confused about the wording for a particular question, uh, questions like that, confusion like that, oftentimes you are not alone and it's really helpful if you can post it to the discussion board because then I can answer that question and other students who are confused can maybe see like, oh yeah, I didn't understand what she wanted us to do for the DBA in that DBA prompt this week or whatever. Um, so yeah, I can't emphasize enough, like don't worry about sounding stupid or whatever, like you should know. Um, if you have like a technical issue or a clarifying question about like how to access something, a due date, um, the phrasing of a particular question, you're very likely not alone. So please post that there. Um, and again, welcome to Business Ethics. And I look forward to, uh, I guess, virtually meeting all of you at some point soon. All right, have a good week.